Hello, folks. So here we are. It is Thursday, the 21st of January. And today what we're going to do is we're going to start working on our genetic engineering lab. Now, this lab looks daunting, but it's actually quite easy. If you remember, yesterday we talked about how genetic engineering works, about how this section could be a bad gene that got a mutation. So it doesn't make the right amino acid. It doesn't make the right protein. It can't do what it's supposed to. Here is our healthy version. And what we could do is we could use enzymes to cut out right here and there. And then this healthy one will situate itself in there. And the next time the DNA is read, then it reads the healthy version, not the mutant version that it had before. Well, today, what we're going to do is we're going to take this a step further, and we're going to go into that intentional side of it, where we are choosing what we're going to change. So, let me bring this up. As for the last six weeks, we are in Unit 4 Genetics. Week six, genetic engineering. And now we're looking at number 26, the genetic engineering lab. Inside this folder is just the lab and the turn in link. That's it. So let's take a look at this lab and what we're going to be doing today. So, what you're going to do is there is an 84 letter sequence of DNA. Let me magnify this some. There's an 84 letter sequence of DNA. That is your organism's DNA. We also have 15 new genes that you could choose to include. You will need to decide on three genes to include and then find the proper placement into the DNA code. Now, it says, and then remake the final genetic code. You don't need to do that, and I'll show you what we're going to do. So, first, determine what species of organism you have. All right, pretty easy. There are four different species, and each one has different genes available to it. Example, a toxic cell wall cannot be given to an organism that doesn't have a cell wall. So that would have to go to a plant. Decide what your goal is, and I'll go over that, but that's the important thing. What is the goal that you want your genetically modified organism to do? What is it going to accomplish? Then you're going to pick your three genes. Then you're going to go to the DNA. Now, sometimes you may pick a trait that doesn't mean that everything's going to fit. So you're going to have to double check and make sure that all of the genes that you want can fit into the DNA of your organism. So here's the key. Your organism must have both red segments of the DNA side by side because that is where we will cut it to then insert the new gene. Now, number five says cut out the genes. We're not going to cut them out because we're doing this digitally, virtually. So let me show you. So here are your possible goals. Do you want, is your goal aesthetic? meaning that it's just about appearance, right? Like you want to make a really cool pet that people would buy. Is it agricultural that you're working with crops? You're trying to improve those crops. Personal, which is kind of our catch-all. You have an idea. You want to make that idea. That's it. Or finally, commercial, which is something that you think you could do that it will then generate sales or value for you. So you're going to choose one of these four. Here are our list of genes. Now you'll notice the genes have a name. They then have the effect. So for instance, the gene IR3 causes skin scales and feathers to become iridescent in color. Uh, DFGA4 increases the thickness of skin, scales, and feathers. HGHA1 increases the size of the organism, et cetera, et cetera. All right. And then over here in the last column is the DNA code required. Remember, the two red segments 
must be side by side. So let's imagine that we have decided on um, aesthetic, right? We want to genetically modify a creature just for appearance. And one of the things we want to do is iridescent color. Let's work with a bird. Let's say that we're trying to turn a peacock into something really extraordinary. All right, so we want to put IR3 in. So we have to find the sequence ATC CCG. And then we're going to try to cut there. So we come down. All right, uh, your organism, we're working with a peacock. The goal for this one aesthetic. First gene that we want to include, I, oh, IR3. All right, so now we got to come down here. And remember, we're looking for A, T, C, 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 G. We need those in that order, those two, A, T, C, 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 G. Well, the good news is if you take a look, ATC, CCG is literally our first pairing. Great. So now we're going to do this. And what we're going to do is you can choose whatever color. I'm going to use red so it shows up. We're going to draw a line over, and then we're going to cut it down. I'm going to say we're going to put the I, R, 3 gene in right there. Now, the IR3 gene is going to add some new DNA. It's going to add the part of the middle, TTA, GGA. So now we got to come down here. I feel like that's the wrong letters. Nope, TTA, GGA. Right, so now I've shown where I'm cutting what gene is going in, and I've identified the new DNA that's being added to this organism. Great. Let's pick another one. Mm, let's see. All right, let's do something silly. Thadge 6. The organism will produce a pearlescent shell. Okay, why not? So we're going to add Thadge 6 to it. And in this case, we're looking for C-G-T-A-T-C. C-G-T-A-T-C. So C-G-T, there's C-G-T, A-T, perfect. There's our second one, boop. All right, and now let's find out what is the DNA that gets added, AAC, TTC. Double check, AAC, TTC, good. All right, so I've got two out of the three genes already included. That's what you want to do. And there's a second line right here so that you have even more room to find those insertion points if you need them. That is our lab. That's all we need to do. Pick your organism. Pick your goal. Pick three genes. And then you want to mark and add in where it will be cut, the gene that will be included, and then the additional letters that will be put into that organism's genetic code. I hope that seems pretty simple. It's not a complex lab, but I want us to get the practice of how this actually works. So ladies and gentlemen, ah, have an excellent day. I look forward to seeing you in class. And yeah, the week's almost over. We'll get there.